Hi, Gerard here. Welcome to Learn Delphi. In the last few lessons, we learned how to make decisions with if statements. In this lesson, we will use the project that we created in the previous lesson again to explore a different kind of conditional statement called a case statement. If you missed out on the previous lesson, I recommend that you first watch that video. In this lesson, we will modify the code in this project. The new code will replace the previous if statements with a case statement. The idea is for you to do a comparison between an if statement and a case statement that must produce the same results. Let me quickly demonstrate the solution to the new guys. If you are new here, we focus on specific code concepts in every lesson. So I do not want to waste time to demonstrate the development of the user interface of the application we create. You can go back to the beginning of this course to see my lessons about graphical user interface development. So if you want to create the user interface for this lesson, you can watch this video and observe how I created it. But if you want to jump into the code immediately, you can go to the description below this video. There's a link to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi, where you can download the starter project files. There's also a link to download the free version of Delphi 10.3 Community Edition, if you want your IDE to look the same as mine. Go download the files and software and come back to write the code with me. Last time we wrote code that enables and disables this button when you enter or remove a character from the edit. We also wrote code that described the letters in the alphabet. Our code handles uppercase and lowercase letters. If you type a vowel, the panel displays vowel. If you type a letter that is not a vowel, like Z, the panel displays consonant. And if you type a number, an if statement must check if it is odd or even, and show odd number or even number in the panel. Also notice how the button is disabled when the edit is blank, and enabled when it is not blank. If you type a special character like an exclamation, the panel must display not an alphanumeric character. If you download it to start the files, open it in your IDE and let's start today's lesson. This is the project in my Delphi IDE. Double click the edit. Here we already have the code that checks if the edit is blank or not. And based on that, the enabled property of the button is set. I'm just going to do a quick overview of the code we did last time. But if you want a detailed lesson, I recommend watching the previous video. If you scroll up, you will see the code that executes when you click the button. We have this char variable for the character in the edit named chr character. And the string variable named str description that stores the description of the character. The description is assigned by if branches here, and the result is assigned to the caption of the panel here at the bottom. Here we have an if statement that uses sets to check if the character is in the alphabet. If not, the compiler will skip this code and then branch out to the else if statement to check if it is a number. If not, the compiler goes to this else statement, which will then assign the phrase not an alphanumeric character to str description. If the character is in the alphabet, the first if branch will execute. Inside the if block, we nested another if statement with its own else block. So if the outer if statement evaluates to true, the inner if statement will check if the character is a vowel or not. The inner if statement also uses a set for the check. If it is a vowel, the word vowel is assigned to str description. If it is not a vowel, this inner else branch will execute, and the word consonant will be assigned to the string variable named str description. If the character is a number, the compiler skips the first outer if statement and moves on to the else if. The inner branch converts the numeric character in the edit to an integer type and the result is then assigned to a byte variable named ptinnum. We do this conversion because we must use the number in a mathematical expression and we can't do that while the number is still a text character. After we assign the converted value, another if statement takes the number and divides it by 2 with the mod operator. If the remainder is zero, the words even number is assigned to str description. If there is a remainder, the words odd number is assigned to str description. The statement here at the bottom executes regardless of which condition in this whole structure is true. This statement assigns the value to the caption of the panel. We will replace this whole if structure with a case statement that does exactly the same. We will do it step by step to make it easy to follow and understand. You will keep the code we will replace so you will have an example of both techniques. So we will just make it a comment so the compiler can ignore it. Put your cursor above the outer if statement and type a curly brace. Now go under the end statement and type a closing brace. We still need this statement for the output. Make a new line and type this comment. 
Replace above if statement with a case statement. Go on the next line and type case chr character of. Delphi added an end statement. Notice a case statement has an end without an opening begin. This case must check what is in chr character. Last time we assigned the text in the edit to chr character. In the previous videos, I also showed that edit characters max length property is set to 1. So only one character can be typed in the edit. That can be a letter in the alphabet, a number or a special character. Our new case statement must check what character is stored in chr character. We call this the selector of the case. Make a new line and type this. Let's see how we can structure case statements and what is allowed and what not. Firstly, the selector must be an ordinal type. So it must be a char, like chr character here. Or it can be an integer type, like integers, small ints, or bytes, like bte num here. Secondly, a case statement has an end at the bottom, without the corresponding begin. Thirdly, more than one check can be done by a case statement. We call this a case list. Also, the values in each individual option in the case list must be unique. So the same value cannot appear in more than one option, because only the first option that evaluates the true will execute. The case statement may have an else option for any values that are not covered in the preceding options in the case list. Now let's explore the different ways we can structure the options that can be included in the case list. The options in the case list can be a single character or a number. We can also use multiple characters or numbers separated by commas. Or it can be a range or a subrange of characters or numbers. We use two dots to indicate a range, just like we've seen with sets in the previous lesson. Or you can use a combination of individual characters or numbers and ranges as an option. Let's look at our code again. Here we use chr character as the selector. Our first option in the case list is to check if the character is in the alphabetical range of uppercase A to lowercase z. So that includes all the alphabetical characters. So this is like saying, if this condition is true, then assign the word letter to the string variable named str description. That will then be displayed in the panel by this statement. Go to the next line and type this. This is the second option in the case list. If the selector, which is chr character, is a numeric character, then we assign the word number to str description. Notice the number in the range is enclosed in inverted commas. That is because the numbers are still characters at this point. Go to the next line and type else str description colon equals not an alphanumeric character. Any character that is not a number or a letter will be handled by this else statement. Run the program, type a lowercase a and click the button. The panel displays letter. Type 4 in the edit, the panel displays number. Type uppercase z, it displays letter. Type 9, the output is number. Type an exclamation, the output is not an alphanumeric character. Close the form. That is how you write a simple case statement. It wasn't too difficult. Now, if this case is true, so if it is a letter, we must check if the letter is a vowel or a consonant. Put your cursor after the colon and type begin. After begin, press enter. In the end this assignment, so it will be nested between the begin and an end keyword, like this. Put your cursor after the assignment statement and press enter. Delphi adds an end keyword. Align end with its corresponding begin. Just like with if statements, we can give multiple instructions for a case that returns true. If you have many things to do for a specific option in a case list, you must put those instructions between begin and end statements. Now go under the begin statement and type case chr character of. On the blank line type this code. Here we use a nested case statement to check if chr character is an uppercase vowel. Remember, we do not have to evaluate the lowercase vowels, because at this point the character will only be an uppercase. That is because we converted the character to an uppercase letter. Here we do it with the upcase function. I also explained the upcase function in the last lesson. 
If it is a vowel, we assign the word vowel to str description. Again, notice the end without the begin. Go to the next line, type else, go under the else statement and type str description colon equals consonant. So if the character is not a vowel, the else statement must assign the word consonant to str description. You can remove this statement because we don't need it anymore. Run the project, type a vowel, and then a consonant and make sure you get the correct results. Close the form. Now we must also handle outputs for odd and even numbers. Put your cursor after this colon and type begin. After begin press enter. Indent the line under the begin statement like this. Put your cursor at the back of the line and press enter. Move the end keyword to align it with its corresponding begin statement. Between begin and end type this code. Remember, up to this point, the number we got from the edit was still a character. So we use the string to int function to convert the number from a character to a number. Then we assign the result to btinum. Now we can use the number in a mathematical expression. Like I mentioned last time, we first check if it is a number, here with the case option. Only if it is, we convert the character and assign it to the byte variable. If we assign the character before we do the check, we may get an error because it may not be a number. Go to the next line and type if bte num mod 2 equals 0, then. And on a new line type str description colon equals even number. Don't enter instruction with a semicolon because we will have an else statement. On the next line type else, and then this assignment statement, and then replace the word number with odd number. Here we do the same as last time. We divide the number in BTE num by 2 with a mod division operator. And if it doesn't have a remainder, in other words, if the remainder is 0, it is an even number. Else, it is an odd number. Also notice how we nest this case in an outer case here. And also notice how we nest an if statement in a case here. So Delphi gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to making multiple decisions. Now you can scroll up to the previous code and compare the case statement with the if statement we wrote last time. Let's test it now. Run the program. Test your application with an odd number and with an even number. Also test it with an exclamation and with a vowel and a consonant. If you are happy, close the form and save your work. Next time, we will look at mathematical operators, expressions and functions. If this lesson was helpful, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! I'll see you next time.